we finished up a series called If. We used the word if. And I was surprised this week I was talking to a fella. And he looked at me and he goes, if? I said, you've been listening to church. So I thought, where should we go next? Where should we go next? And I was out walking around my backyard and I looked across the street and I seen this great big combine going through this field. I said, the harvest. It's fall. The crops have matured. They're now drying in the fields. They're getting all set to be harvested. This month, I want us to look at, maybe more than a month, the great harvest. Now, you know, the Bible speaks pretty seriously about the harvest. And I'm going to use some... What do I want to say? Some similarities over farming, to the best of my knowledge. But I'm going to refer to them somewhat as a spiritual sense. I want you to think of yourselves when we talk about the ground the seed goes into. Think about what comes out. Think about God planted me here. He planted me. Could I not be a seed into this church? Could we not all be seeds into this church to grow, to mature, to bring forth 50, 60, 100 times? Couldn't that be us? I want you to think about things like this as we talk about the harvest. We're going to look at four concepts. First of all, to have a harvest, what do you got to have? You got to have dirt, right? You got to have something to put the seed in. Now, I tried my hand at growing tomatoes this year. My wife laughs. They were doing great. Plants were huge. I even went to Walmart and bought special miracle Grow potting soil for my plants. And they had all these wonderful, nice green tomatoes on it. And I went out one morning to check on them. My prized tomatoes. And they were all gone. Leaves and all. Something that ate them. Tore all the leaves off. I had little green tomatoes all over the backyard. And the remains of animals along with them. So what about our dirt? Does it matter what kind of dirt we plant seed in? Sure it does. Could the dirt have way too much sand in it so when it rains, the water all goes away real quick? Doesn't allow the roots to grow? Could it be full of clay? Hard as a rock, so we have to fertilize and tile and make sure the water gets away so it doesn't drown our seed. Sure, you got to have good dirt. We must have good seed, right? Round up ready seed. You've seen the commercials. We then need water and fertilizer for our crops. See, guys, the Word of God is seed that comes into this dirt. The direction of the Holy Spirit inspiring and giving understanding through that seed is the water and fertilizer for this crop. And finally, if all goes well and animals stay away, we have a harvest, don't we? But what is required through all these steps 
What is required? We got to have workers. We got to have laborers. That ground doesn't get turned all up in the spring by itself. There has to be equipment. And if I was laying in the field and I seen that tractor and those big discs or no-till, plowing, whatever we do, when I see them coming at me, I would be a little scared. And you know what? When they did that plow in the soil for the first time after resting and it turns that dirt over, ground had feelings, that would be painful. Sometimes God's Word, when it speaks to our lives, is painful. We've done it this way all our lives. It can't be any different. And then God speaks to us through His Holy Spirit. And he says, no, nope. I'll turn that over. Sometimes it hurts but we grow. We struggle sometimes. When we harvest our crop, how will we store it so we can use it later? Will we parboil it and freeze it? Will we process it and can it and hope our seals on our lids hold? What will we do? to save our harvest to be used. You know, we're pretty lucky. We live in a rural community. And when I was struggling canning salsa, I'd call my mom. Say, how do you get those skin off them tomatoes? Do I got to cook them first? And she gave me advice. She lent me things I needed to know to save I called them welfare tomatoes because this year a bunch of folks gave me them to save my harvest so I can enjoy it all year long. This morning, and first of all, I'd like us to look at our dirt, our ground. Psalms 103. Verses 9 through 14, and you'll see this on page 428, tells us this. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers we are dust. We are dirt. Let's pray. Father God, this morning, Lord, we thank you for your word. We pray, Father God, that your words will strengthen us, will encourage us, will help us to understand our purpose and our being in this place. Lord, now as this service continues and we enter into communion, I pray, Father God, that the remembrance of Jesus on the cross will be alive in our minds, will be new in our heart. We can come forward and partake of the bread and of the wine, the remembrance of our Savior. Father God, allow hearts to receive your word this morning and allow our minds to be open for understanding. Holy Spirit, you are welcome to her. And we pray that this service will be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to hop ahead here just a little bit. Let's look at Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 through 7. 
And you'll find that on page 2. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. When the Lord God made the heaven, made the earth and the heavens, and no shrub of the field had yet appeared on earth, and no plant of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no man to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living thing. A living thing. We are formed from this earth. This is how God's made us. I may be able to do certain things better than you, but guess what? Most of you can do a lot of things better than me. We're all gifted with talents and abilities that came from God the Father. His gifting in our lives is real and can be used. My wife this morning come through the church and I cleaned yesterday. She says, I'll just do it myself. I said, honey, I cleaned. She goes, you didn't see this? You didn't see that? No. I didn't. She has different giftings. She can see things. Honest. I can't. I tried. God has worked in each of our lives. Unique abilities. Use them. Don't let them sit in the pew. Use them. Prepare this dirt to receive seed. Prepare it daily to receive seed. Then allow His Holy Spirit to water and fertilize. What did he say here? Nothing on earth was ready. It was barren. Because God the Father had not sent rain yet. Allow His Spirit to rain on you in the morning so the seed will grow. Amen? We're going to get ready to take communion. And guys, to me, this is pretty serious. Okay? I want our hearts to be able to receive this morning. The Bible tells us if we do things of this nature with an ill heart or a bad heart, then we speak ill on us. And we do this about four times of the year, four times a year here. And every time I ask that we have a moment of silence. So you can prepare your hearts for what we are about to receive. If there's any unforgiveness, give it to God. If there's any sin, give it to God. If you're struggling with something, ask God to intervene in that and prepare your body and your heart to receive this morning. Would you do that with me? Let's be quiet for just a minute.